following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. Breaking loss it was last Saturday for the Hawkeyes. And Dick Vermeil, I know you've been with the coaches and the players. How did the team come out of that setback at the hands of the Buckeyes? Well, Brent, I'll tell you, I really believe the players have recovered better than the coaches. They're more resilient. The coaches are still bleeding. Each time you talk to a coach, he starts talking about last Saturday and this might have happened, this might have happened. It's tough to get over those. Hawkeyes are favored by 26. Does Purdue have any weapons that can keep them in the game today? Well, their only real offensive weapon is Eric Hunter. They're, he leads the Big Ten in total offense. He's a tall young man. He can throw the football. He can run the football. And as you can see here, as we're going to go in and show them, Brent, the, the, what we actually put together in the pregame warm-up. Here he is, Eric, right in the middle of your screen. He both drops straight back, and he'll scramble from there. He'll sprint in left. He'll sprint right set up and from a bootleg action many talents what kills you most though is the broken play running and passing he's really dangerous dick the key with eric is whether or not that injured right knee is going to hold up against this fierce hawkeye defense we're coming back it's iowa and purdue on abc abc college football brought to you by honda maker of fine quality automobiles Test drive a Honda at your local dealer today. By Certain T, manufacturers of high quality insulate free fiberglass building insulation. By Hewlett Packard laser jet printers, they'll get you noticed. And by USF&G Insurance, protecting your business, home, auto, and life. USF&G, standing behind the USA. 60 degrees, folks. Wind five to 10 miles an hour out of the west southwest. What a stadium this is for tailgating. And where is Mark Jones? Probably out looking for a bratwurst. What's going on, Mark? Thanks a lot, Brent. You know, here at Iowa, they've really raised the art of tailgating into a science. But I'm here with the Alpha Gam sorority, as well as three generations of the Grub Clan. Now, isn't this all a little bit premature? I mean, they haven't even been guaranteed a birth in the Rose Bowl yet, Brent. Brent Dick, you know, that's what it's all about here at Iowa. This is their football team. There's no pro team here, so, well, the state really embraces this football team, and Steve, you're off, too, and I gotta show you what the main cook wears when you're cooking an Iowa hot dog or bratwurst or whatever. Steve, what's on the grill today? Well, I'm gonna tell you, we've got steaks, we've got hot dogs, we've got sloppy joes, and I'm dressed to keep clean, and we're gonna go out and wipe up Purdue, and we're gonna wipe out the Huskies at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena this year. You can count on it, we're gonna be there. Brent Dick, yeah, it may be a little premature, but I'm going to grab a seat with Grandpa, sit down, watch the game, have a bite, and I'll check in with you guys sometime later. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Al, here come the grubs. If Hayden can get the job done here today, 29th season of coaching, remarkable performance here with the Iowa Hawkeyes, formerly down in the Southwest Conference with SMU. Fred Akers, meanwhile, is a coach under fire. Here's a man badly in need of a big-time win with the Boilermakers. They stumbled against Minnesota at home in Indiana, and this program is reeling right now. And this entire coaching staff 
needs a lift here this afternoon from the former head coach of the Texas Longhorns to see if he can get the job done. Meanwhile, Illinois beating Indiana 24 to 10 there in the fourth quarter there, and Northwestern has slipped ahead of Michigan State 9-7 at the half up in Dyke Stadium. You can see just how gorgeous the weather is in Iowa City on this November Saturday. Purdue will receive. They're in the traveling white jerseys here, and the Hawkeyes with Jeff Skillett, number 11, to kick it off. And again, Iowa can wrap up a Rose Bowl berth today, but for that to happen, Wisconsin would have to come back in the second half to beat Ohio State. It looks like, if the odds hold up, it looks like it will go down to next Saturday with Ohio State hosting Michigan and Iowa heading for the Twin Cities. First things first. Even though they're a 26-point favorite, the Hawkeyes have to do it on the field. Callaway and Yetz are deep for the Boilermakers. Callaway at the one. With a 20, opening... 35, 40, 45, midfield, and out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. A sensational return. There was a very good lane block nicely. You'll see it on the screen here. You'll see a lane block open for Callaway. Has great speed. Last year he didn't play at an injured knee. Here he comes. He hit that crack. Look at nice lane in there. Coverage overruns it. Merton hangs 45. The safety gets in position to try to make the play. Very well executed kickoff return. A 60-yard return. Stuns the Hawkeyes. Purdue with the ball. First and 10 at the Iowa 39. And Eric Hunter, he'll remind you of Randall Cunningham. John Oglesby is his lone setback in this Run and shoot, and they shoot right away. Incomplete and out of bounds. Jeff Hill, the intended receiver. The young man with 11 touchdowns and nine interceptions does misfire. He is wild sometimes, but he has great talent. Behind him, Oglesby Hill, Callaway, Ross, and McManus. His receivers, Chronopolis, Taylor, Dressel, Sigelski, and Conover, the offensive line for Purdue. Second and 10. They usually run when they send one of the slot men back, and they do this time. Good and that is Callaway. Very good job by the nose tackle. Mike Wells moving inside out on the play. Nice job. Wells starting in front of Davis here for this defense. Rod Davis not there in that lineup. Maria Crane, he will step in for Moses Santos, who is out with an injury. John Derby and Melvin Foster are the inside linebackers. And the book is missing from that defensive backfield for the Hawkeyes. And Gary Clark, number 19, steps in. This is third and 11. After the loss of a yard, they'll throw out of this formation. Trips now out to the left after the motion. Hunter rolling in that direction. He is cut off. Receiver's covered. He'll throw to the middle. Kyle dropped. Should have had a first down. And Jeff Hill dropped the ball. You can see how dangerous this young quarterback is you'll see that he gets back there he gets back there sets up can't find anybody open he's on that full roll action he sets up he can't find now there's a rush he's dodging around good athlete now with just arm strength alone he fires the strike downfield to, to jeff hill and he drops the ball a true freshman and last year he had his biggest last week rather he had his biggest game today he starts out with a drop ball eric brune in punt formation they're inside the 50. They're going to go ahead and try to pooch punt it inside the 20 if they can. Nettler lets it roll dead, and it'll be downed at the two-yard line by the Boilermakers. A 37-yard punt. Iowa's ball when we come back. Very productive offense early on. Those are touchdowns last week against Ohio State and prior to that against Illinois and Northwestern. They'll have to march 98 yards to get it done this time. Rogers hands off to Bell, who crashes out to the six-yard line. So Matt Rogers with Montgomery, Bell, Hughes, and Smith. 
as his skill players on the field and a very talented offensive line. Davis, Devlin there at center, Miller, Baxley. And how about Michael Titley, the tight end, Coach Vermeil? He had a great game last week, and he plays in a stand-up position rather than getting in a three-point stance. And as you fans watch the ball game, you'll notice it. he will not be in a three-point stance. He'll be standing tall. Not wearing the visor because of the late afternoon start. Rogers barking the signal. Bell again. Out to the 12-yard line. And what appears to be a first down before Chris Burns can tackle him for the Boilermakers. Let's meet that Purdue defense. How about this line? I tell you, they're very physical. The guy that's the best player right in that group is Jeff Scania, number 40. McNeil has been the leading tackler, number 57. And the secondary, the Texas Posse. Steve Jackson's the guy I like. Small, quick, but he can cover. There's number one. Figures to be busy here this afternoon. It was just short of a first down. Bell on first oh. two carries. <laughs> movement. Scania, number 40, came across the line. There was contact. Scania is a, an aggressive young man. Tom Quinn, 15-year veteran of the Big Ten. And a mistake by the Akers team. And the rest of Tom's crew here this afternoon, Lorenzo Clemens, our umpire. First and ten after the five-yard penalty. Moves the ball out to the Iowa 16-yard line. Here's Montgomery behind Bell. Gets outside to the 22-yard line. Eric Beattie brings him down. The one thing with this type of play is when you're going to tackle a back like Montgomery, you can't just grab him with your arm. Now, you see he'll move to the left. Now, you'll see Mintner come out number 99. See him grab him with the arm right. You've got to get your shoulder pads in that guy. Now, that was a good tackle made by Beattie, number 47. But you've got to get your body into the tackle. He's too big at, two, at uh, over 220 pounds. Played very well against Ohio State after coming back from an injury. Sean Smith brought the play in from Hayden Fry's sideline. And Bell is stopped at the line of scrimmage by Jimmy Schwantz. This will set up a third down, a passing situation here, Dick. Well, they have been pretty efficient in third down situations in the past. You know, when they beat Michigan, they had two long scoring drives and didn't have a third down situation. But when they get in third down situations, they do a real good job. They like to audible also in the third down. And I, from what I understand in the game plan from Purdue, they'll like to, to come after you with some linebacker blitzes. Double tied in, one running back, third and four, and they're going to run Bell out of it. And he does not get the first down. That was Beattie, number 47, who hit him first. He delivered the initial blow, and Purdue forces Iowa to punt. So that string of three consecutive games with a first series resulting in a touchdown comes to an end here for the Hawkeyes. Jimmy Hyzak standing on the Iowa 10-yard line. Ernest Callaway, who returned a kickoff, 60 yards, set to return this punt. It's returnable. It's low. He's got it at the 39-yard line. Makes his way back to the 48-yard line, where again, Purdue will have favorable field position. A drop pass forced him to punt the last time. We'll be coming back in just a moment. Stewart and playing their final game at Kinnick Stadium. They were two of the 15 seniors introduced to this crowd of 70,000 here this afternoon. The last home game will finish out the regular season up at the Twin Cities against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Hunter and the Boilermakers. The only running back now is the quarterback. Eric the Great with a short drop over the middle. Dropped and almost an easy reception on the Ricochet. Ball is picked off by Clark. 
So the young man who couldn't hold on to the interception a week ago comes up with a ricochet early. But again, it's a drop ball by Jeff Hill as Melvin Foster got back defensively. As you take a look at from the end zone, there was a man in motion. You don't see any back in the backfield. He's gone in motion. He spread the defense. Now he wants to hit the seam in the zone. He does. They were caught off balance. He catches it there, bobbles it, pushes it in the air. He taps it in the air. And you know, actually, Brent, coaches coach these kind of drills on the practice field where they get in hot ball drills and bat them around to make players aware that things like this do happen in ball games. The tip drill worked today. Clark, who has replaced the book in that lineup. Doug Book is out with an injury, and Clark failed to hold on to several opportunities last Saturday against Ohio State. But he shuts the door here, and it's first and ten with Hughes in motion behind Rodgers, and again it is Bell bouncing to the outside this time. A first down across midfield. Actually, that's what Bell does best. He bounces outside better than he cuts back. This is a great example of what I'm talking about. He'll start to the right of your left of your screen. He's up inside. Now, see him take that bounce to the outside. It's clogged. Good pursuit inside out by Beatty. But he has that 4-5 speed at 240 pounds. Good move. 13-yard gain for Bell. Ball is at the Purdue 48-yard line. They listed him at 255. By the end of the season, he's running at 240. <laughs> and it is Montgomery, the fullback. Wow, can't he lose, lose? And he battles his way across the 45 before Tommy McNeil can bring him down. Georgia Tech on a roll. They'll play in the Citrus Bowl against Nebraska here on ABC. Ty Detmer, hot in pursuit of a Heisman Trophy. And Florida up. Meanwhile, Texas could be going back to the Cotton Bowl. And look at the snub the Sugar Bowl got today. With Virginia going to be playing the champion of the Southeastern Conference. And there'll be more talk about handing out those bull bids a little early. This is Bell again, and he is going to be short of that first down. Frank Comet, number 73, there defensively. It looks like so far in the game plan, they're just a little reluctant to start Rodgers throwing the football for some reason. Remember the last third down situation, they ran the football here at second and five, and they run the football again. Now they have themselves into a third and almost four situation. Let's see if they throw the ball. Iowa with eight runs, and Rodgers still to throw for the first time, but they're in a situation now where they could be passing it. He audibled here. Oh, and this bobble the snap. Ball was put down on the bobble snap, and Purdue jumped on it at the bottom of the pile. They're signaling that they've got it, and they do. Boilermaker ball. Eric Beatty recovered it. But can Akers' offense execute? He audibled on the line of scrimmage, changed it, and he either pulled out early or the center snapped it early. You can see the ball right there in the middle of your screen, and the quarterback was pulling away from the center just prior to the snap. You can see the ball right here on the ground. It's not a very good way to start out your series. A turnover for each team. First and 10 for Purdue. Ball is at the Boilermaker 43-yard line. The handoff is to Oglesby, and he's to the 47-yard line with John Derby tackling it. Last week, Purdue tried to upgrade their running attack, and they started using the, a wing back in motion and tossing in the ball, which they have already done in this quarter. That time, they started back in motion, and they handed the fullback. I think it helps their running game to do things like this. Four wide receivers in the run and shoot. Purdue does not show motion this time. Oglesby back to protect. Iowa sat here nine times last season, and now Jim Johnson gets number one here today. A 12-yard loss for Purdue. Here is uh, Hunter right over here. He'll be coming around the outside. He's coming up. And last, last year, as he said, he had four sacks in this ball game number 71 chasing him down taking another look at it low the main concern of, of 
the offensive coaches for Purdue were these two guys. Here they are, bookends, meeting the quarterback in the backfield. Third and 17 for Hunter, who possesses the big arm. He can go long if he can get time. Tries to get away from the defensive player, and here comes the penalty flag. Tom Quinn, perhaps ruling intentional grounding as Matt Ruland was wrapping him up. He's arguing that there was a receiver in that area where he threw the ball. But Quinn will have none of it. Matt Ruland, number 57, the defensive tackle. Be coming from the left side of your screen. Here he is working. That's usually the reverse pivot move. Real good technique move on Conover. Got up underneath him. Really well done. Great play by Ruland. Now back in punt formation again is Eric Broom. He's had three punts blocked already today. Handle back deep, number 81. Purdue has been sacked 32 times coming into this ball game. That's too many sacks. The offensive line very young. Conover supposedly their best tackle. Left-footed punter gets it off. Beautiful punt. Handle back to the Hawkeye 33 yard line. And out at the 42 yard line where it will be first down. We're scoreless here in the first quarter in Iowa City. And we'll be coming right back. Well, Bart, what happened to the Minnesota Golden Gophers this afternoon? <laughs> they couldn't get the job done. Michigan has defeated them. They've been eliminated. Iowa now trying to move a step closer. Great fake by Rogers. He does that as well as anybody in college football. Complete to Smith and out of bounds at the 35-yard line. A 23-yard gain. Real good man-to-man -man coverage. Real good man-to-man -man coverage, but the, they didn't get a rush on him. He had too much time to allow the one-on-one -on -one situation to, to happen. You'll see play-action fake. Now, beautiful fake. He hides the ball. Time, time, time. Finally, Komet gets in there. Finally, Sean Smith breaks away from the one-on-one -on -one coverage. You can't leave a corner covered one-on-one that long. It's just too long for little Steve Jackson to get her done. First and 10 for Iowa. Ball at the Boilermaker, 35. Montgomery to the 29-yard line on first down. There's the final. Meanwhile, Ohio State must win two to stay in pursuit of a possible Rose Bowl berth. Iowa could wrap it up today if the Badgers can upset Ohio State. Paul Kuyawa checks into that backfield he will be in front of Nick Bell who has gone all the way at tailback so far dead ball foul with about eight seconds to go dead ball ball start Offense. Big another mistake by Iowa uh, there's a little lingering I think and little thought during the preparation Iowa's offense has been very efficient all year. They 142 blank plays over 10 yards. Now, Brent, that's 21% of the snaps through the season when 10 yards are better. And these other 20, 23 gains, 20 yards, that's outstanding offensive football. They need one of those 10-yard plays right now. Oh. Second and 10. Penalty flag comes flying again. Carl Jackson, the offensive coordinator for Iowa, told us in the meeting that they were going to vary the cadence on Purdue to try to stop uh, and prevent the defensive lineman from being able to tee off. Encroachment, defense. Well, I can remember about two years ago when a fellow by the name of Lee Trevino made a hole in one in the Skins game. Maybe it'll happen again. Jack Nichols, Greg Norman, Nick Fallow, Curtis Strange as the Skins game comes to ABC. Here it is, Bell. Picking up an Iowa first down at the 22-yard line. So it will be first and 10 for the Hawkeyes. As you take a look at this from the end zone, you'll see the draw blocking. The fullback here will lead through, 
quarterback, full tailback will set and then take the draw up through the point of attack. Comes back and drop back pass, tailback waiting, Bell gets, it, gets a nice block by number 23 right there. Kuyawa does a nice job of cleaning out the hole. He gets hurt on the play. He's down at the 21-yard line. So let's take a look at it. It is number 43. Three men come in defensively. The third man coming in from the side right there. Smashed into the side of the helmet. And Bell is down at the 22-yard line. Might have a little headache. Woo! Jumps back up. And it was that last man into the pile. When this guy gets his motor running like he did against Illinois, he can carry the offense. He can make an offense that's sluggish. He can provide him the spark that gets him going. First and 10, and Dick, listen to this. The last 25 times the Hawkeyes have had a first down inside the 35-yard line. They have scored 20 touchdowns, five field goals, extremely efficient. Tony Stewart, number 21, he's quick. He's in a tailback. He'll carry it. Here he comes. Across the 15 for the 11-yard line. And Jarrett Scales bringing him down. A re another real good block by Paul Kiawa, number 23. He does a real good job of kicking out the outside linebacker. Here's a low end zone, end zone shot. See, he hands it off deep. Now the fullback to the left of your screen gets the kick out. There he's running up inside that hole. Good job by the fullback. Again, two plays in a row. Nine-yard gain for Stewart. Montgomery, the fullback. He split to Stewart's right. Good down to pass on. They'll give it to Stewart instead. He's got the first down. And handled it to six by Terry Johnson and Steve Jackson. Two of the Texas posse surrounded him. Well, they faked to the, they faked to the fullback first. You'll see a nice fullback fake inside. And that draws the linebackers here. You'll see the fullback go in here and fake, and that draws the linebackers. Then they hand off to the second man. See, fake inside. Now we'll get the cutback hole right up there. Good blocking at the point of attack. And behind the, the point of attack, good movement up in there. First and goal from the six-yard line. And the word from the bench is that Bell jammed his neck, but should be all right. The toss to Stewart behind Montgomery and Jackson. Number one does a great job defensively. The fullback had loaded up on the young cornerback, and he would not be blocked out of the play. Here he is. job. Five foot eight, 177 pounds, taking on the big fullback. Did a good job, but actually the tailback got too wide on that toss play. Should have been a little bit more under control and ready to go back up underneath that kickout block. Yawa into the backfield. Second down and goal, just inside the five-yard line. That power eye look to Yawa. And he is stopped at number three, Jarrett Scales. The corner from the other side comes up with Peyton Mettner. This is just a power off tackle play. Formation strong to the right of your screen. Here they are, double down, kicking out. The hole's plugged up. Mittner forces him to the outside. He the play, then makes the play himself. Good job. They didn't get Mittner blocked at the point of attack. It is now third and goal. Back to the seven-yard line. The Hawkeyes are going to have to put it up. Good run defense by Purdue. Rogers drops straight back. It's his home to score for the touchdown. and the wide receiver will come down inside here, pull the corner, and actually pick the linebacker who's assigned to cover this man swinging out of the backfield. That's the difficult part about man-to-man. -man. Now, see the receiver run into the coverage man right there. Technically, that's a penalty. It's not called very often. And that is Stewart's first receiving touchdown of the year as Jeff Skillett adds the extra point. He's now 38 of 41. Here's another look at it. Straight drop back. There's the pick right in the middle of your screen. He ran right into the outside linebacker, 48, Jim Schwantz. There he is. No one covering him because he was actually blocked by the wide receiver. Rodgers passing has had 
a lot of time. You would yes. have to think that they can go to that air game whenever they want. I believe they will, too, because you, you take a look at Purdue's defense. They've only sacked the quarterback nine times. Nine times the whole season. I wouldn't doubt to see uh, Iowa pick up the tempo in the terms of the number of passes they throw on those early rundowns as, as we go through the ball game. I think Coach Akers was uh, talking about that pick play. There isn't a team in football that doesn't run it. Purdue has been its own worst enemy here this afternoon. After returning the opening kickoff 60 yards, they had a drop pass down here. Then in the second offensive series, they dropped another one that would have put them on the march. Iowa, making mistakes, was unable to get anything going until this drive. Now they lead it 7 0. Callaway, number 13, is the young man who returned at 60 yards, and they'll make a switch. They'll bring Dunyasha Yetz, number 25, over to the other side on case. They're going to try to go away from Callaway. Let's see if the Hawkeyes picked it up. And it's going to be Callaway again after that move at the four, after the 15. Cut off this time and short of the 20-yard line. Great coverage by Saunders and Brian Wise. Now let's go to Corey McFerrin for an update. Corey? All right, Brent, a stunner at Charlottesville. Maryland, Virginia. Maryland up 35-28 a minute to go in the game. Fourth and goal from the two for Virginia. Sean Moore rolling out. He'll be stopped by Lewis Johnson. Moore hurt his hand on this play. Maryland upends the Cavs 35-30. And can you believe it? No touchdowns for Sean or Herman Moore. Back to Brent. Thank you, Corey. Hope you enjoy your afternoon in the studio there. Subbing for Roger Twibel, who's out covering golf for ABC this afternoon. Rodney Dennis, number 81 checks into the game. Purdue badly in need of a big play. Galen Morrow is also there. And Hunter hits Hill who hangs on this time but it doesn't matter because Leroy Smith drilled him. Leroy Smith is called a linebacker but he really is a converted defensive back. If he moves on into the National Football League he'll probably end up in a safety position. He has that good all around athletic ability plus the speed. He was a state champion in the quarter mile. He can run. Tommy Maddox in UCLA ahead of USC by a point in the early going. And Iowa win here today and Michigan, Michigan State and Illinois all would be eliminated from a possible trip to the Rose Bowl. Wouldn't that be some season for the Hawkeyes if they can do that on one Saturday afternoon? Wells, the nose man, moving from side to side. Other oh, hands off. Again, Wells. And the running back, Galen Morrow, who was hit by Mike Wells. They are offsetting the nose guard, meaning not playing him head up, and it really makes it tough to block him. As we take a look from the end zone, you'll see what I'm talking about right here. See, he's not head on the center. He's over here, and the center is trying to reach to get him, and he can't get him, so he moves inside out and makes the play. See what I mean? That is really tough to do for that center. Our guys will be looking sack this time. Hunter is back. Complete, and it's a first down for Purdue at the 33-yard line. Rodney Dennis, number 81, was the receiver. Scott Plate there defensively, 15 yards. A good move you're going to see here. They're going to put two people now on that offset nose guard. They're not going to block him all by himself. The guard is helping right now. You'll see helping right there. Then he releases him. This gives him the time. And this young man, you give him time. He can fire that apple. Look, at the line drive shot right in the zone. Oglesby back in at running back for Purdue. Iowa 7, Purdue nothing. Hill, and they hand to Oglesby. And Johnson... Number 71 led the defensive charge. He just stood his man up that time, Dick, and got it done. Yes, he is a player. You know, we had a chance to, to, to watch these guys play a week ago, and then we saw in preparation the tape from a week ago. These two defensive tackles, Rulin number 57, Johnson number 71, are probably, as a pair, the best two defensive tackles in the Big Ten, as a pair. Alabama, big over Cincinnati at the half. Colorado State could be headed for a bowl game under Earl Bruce. Second down and long for Purdue. Callaway coming in motion. 
gives him three wide receivers to the wide side of the field. Coming out for the inside shuffle. Good job. Got it into Hill's hands. And that was just tremendous ability on the part of Eric Hunter. He wanted the little inside shovel pass that time, but he comes up limping. His right knee is bothering him again, and it's because of this intense pressure here, Dick. You can see they're coming after him with linebackers. Derby number 31's coming in there. Here they're coming outside now. This knee, at least, it's not a structural injury. It is a bruise on the outside surface. I kind of believe he can keep playing. Well, he'll get a little more time here as we come to the end of the first quarter. So we'll get a quarter break, and Eric Hunter has to welcome that. 